In this video, we'll introduce you to the ArcGIS Analytics for IoT application and cover how the different capabilities in the app relate to each other. Analytics for IoT is a real-time and big data capability for ArcGIS. It allows you to create feeds and analytics to ingest, analyze, and take action based on observations from IoT sensors. Once Analytics for IoT has been enabled for your organization, it can be accessed from the app launcher, or you can simply visit iot.arcgis.com in a web browser. The Analytics for IoT homepage provides shortcuts to recently created or modified tasks, as well as links to useful documentation and resources. The Feeds page shows the list and status of your configured feeds. A feed is a real-time stream of data coming into Analytics for IoT. Feeds typically connect to external sources of observational data, such as Internet of Things platforms, message brokers, or third-party APIs. To create a feed, click the button at the top. You can create a feed from content inside of ArcGIS, such as a feature layer, from a cloud-based IoT solution like Azure or Amazon IoT, or from a messaging system like Kafka or MQTT. From the feeds page, you can quickly edit feeds, start or stop them, or open them in the ArcGIS map viewer. The pop-out menu gives you additional options such as cloning a feed or making a copy, deleting the feed, or jumping to the feed logs. Next, let's go over the analytics capabilities. The real-time analytics page shows the list and status of your real-time analytics. A real-time analytic performs processing on data being ingested through a feed, analyzing each message as it's received. Real-time analytics are typically used for transforming data, geofencing, and incident detection. To create a real-time analytic, again, you click the button at the top. Building a real-time analytic always starts with a feed and you can browse to an existing feed or create a new one on the fly. When using an existing feed, it can be one of your feeds or a feed that's been shared to you in your organization. Once you've chosen or created a new feed, the analytic editor opens. From this editing experience, you can add analytical tools of various kinds, add outputs, and configure a step-by-step -step process. Once you save an analytic, you can also toggle between the workflow view and a model view which allows you to configure more than one processing pipeline. Analytics for IoT allows you to create big data analytics in addition to real-time analytics. A big data analytic performs batch analysis on stored data, such as data in a feature layer or in cloud big data stores. They're typically used for summarizing observations, performing pattern analysis, and assessing trends. When you create a big data analytic, you begin by defining an input source of stored data as opposed to real-time data, but the process follows the same approach as defining a new feed. From the analytic list pages, you can also start or stop an analytic. A real-time analytic, once started, continues running indefinitely until you stop it. A big data analytic, on the other hand, fires up, runs the process on the designated data set, outputs the results, and stops. If the big data analytic is scheduled, it'll automatically start up again on its next designated runtime. Both analytic list pages also allow you to edit the analytic, clone it to make a copy, delete it, or jump to the analytic logs. Finally, let's explore the layers page, which lists the feature layers, map image layers, and stream layers created using Analytics for IoT. Layers are created by configuring outputs in real time or big data analytics. When the analytic runs, output layers are automatically created, and they can be managed from here or added to a web map for visualization. Every feature layer created by Analytics for IoT has an associated map image layer, both of which are based on the same underlying dataset. Deleting the feature layer will also delete any associated map image layers and the underlying data. Stream layers visualize real-time data only. That's why there's no associated dataset for stream layers. Map image layers can be edited by clicking the pencil icon. This opens up the aggregation rendering editor. This experience allows you to adjust the default rendering of the dynamic aggregation. So for example, you can change the gradient colors for high and low values, adjust the feature threshold to show fewer or larger numbers of raw features, or adjust the resolution of the aggregation. For example, to make the bins smaller so that you can see more detailed patterns. As you make changes, you'll use the Save Layer button to save these rendering settings to the layer so that other users will have the same visual experience. 
This concludes our tutorial on getting started with Analytics for IoT. From here, you can begin to create feeds to bring in real-time data, or build a big data analytic to work with data that you've already collected. Thanks for watching. Thank you.